Hello, I'm Fish Fishburn. And I'm Shaw Grigsby. Welcome to the Bassmasters. Shaw, we've got a great show in store today. We're going to feature Texas Pro Jay Ellis. That's right, Fish. Today, Jay's going to show us one of my favorite ways to catch bass, throwing spinnerbaits around laydown. The Bassmaster camera crew caught up with Jay on Lake Neely Henry in northern Alabama. Hi, I'm Jay Ellis, and today on the show, we're going to go spinnerbait fishing. We're here in the northern Alabama on one of my favorite fisheries in the whole world, the Coosa River. Specifically, we're fishing the upper end of Neely Henry Lake, and it's a home to big largemouth bass and some monster spotted bass, too. The water's about 55 degrees, and it's, it's a good late fall pattern fishing these uh, laydowns and, and uh, little rocks and laydowns, fallen trees and stuff along the river channel edge. We're going to be fishing the main river channel, slow rolling, a uh, half ounce spinnerbait. These, this time of year, the fish are chasing these big threadfin and gizzard shad up and down this river. And a slow winding spinnerbait presentation is the best way to get some big bites. You never know if you're going to catch a six pound largemouth or a six pound spotted bass. And so let, let's, uh, let's go fishing. Get him out here away from this cover a little bit. Oh, he's about a three pounder or so. Pretty good way to start the day. Come here, little fella. All right. That's what we're looking for. There's bigger ones than that around, but good way to start the day. About a three, three and a half pound largemouth. Big old head on him. Good little fish. He was right in there by that, see where that big log lays at an angle off that other log, off that fallen tree? Right where he's supposed to be. We'll let him go and, and uh, try a hand at catching him, his mom. She's probably right down the bank here a little ways. One thing, you know, one little tip for spinner baits. Well, there's a lot of tips I'll share with you with everybody today, but. A lot of times when you catch a fish like that, they just bend the heck out of the wire on your spinner. And uh, this Berkeley J. Yellis power spinner bait that I'm using, we, it's pretty light wire. I do that for the extra vibration that the light wire gives, but a lot of times when you catch a fish, it'll really bend that wire. And uh, you always want to make sure you get that wire form just back to exactly where it was before you made your cast so that the spinner bait runs true when you're bringing it in. Good night. That, I think that's a spotted bass. It looked like it. Fighting like it, too. I love these catching these spots. They fight like largemouth, or even better than largemouth, usually. Come here, baby. Oh, look at that. He straightened my spinnerbait straight out. Oh, it's, what is that, about a mm, two and a half pound spotted bass mangled my spin. Look at these. That's what I love about catching these spots. They just demolish. <laughs> they just demolish your equipment. He's a nice one, though. He's a uh, pretty fish. I'd like to have him in a lot of tournaments, I fish. We'll let him go out here. All right, friend. Thank you. Thanks for the fun. I'll see you again later. OK. Well, we got one large mouth in one spot so far. That's about typical for the Coosa River. It's pretty good uh, mixed bag usually up here. I'm going to have to retie my line after that. <clears throat> that fish got wrapped around that limb, and uh, he frayed my line a little bit. So it's all, you always want to make sure you check your line, especially that first foot or so, first foot or two above your knot. <clears throat> if it feels a little frayed, you want to cut it, retie so you don't lose a big fish. I'm going to talk a little bit about the equipment I'm using this morning. I've got. Uh, <clears throat> Throwing a Team Dial with spinner bait rod, a, TD, a TDX bait caster, 20 pound Trilene XT, and heavy equipment. This is mean, nasty, down and dirty cover. You don't want to throw in there with 10, 12 pound line. A big fish will eat your lunch and something like this. So you gotta, gotta go with the big stuff. Big old Coosa, Coosa River spot. <clears throat> Look at that fish. That's oh, he's bigger than.
The Bassmasters is brought to you by Mercury, Chevy, Ranger, Bass Pro Shop, Kmart, and Garmin. Yeah, that looks just beautiful there. We've got, got about we've got three trees converging together on the, at the tip out here in deeper water. My, my boat's in about 11 feet of water, and I'm casting to the bank. So you've got a fairly slow tapering bank. Just try to lay that cast right in the middle of those trees. Then the, there's one. Little guy. Right in there on that lay down. Let's see if he's a large mouth. Looks like a large mouth. Little fat guy. Little football. He's a little smaller than those other ones we were catching, but he's a nice little fish, about 14 inches. Look how fat and healthy this fish is. I mean, that's a, he's close to two pounds. He's only about 14, 15 inches long. A lot of this Coosa River is very fertile fishery. I mean, there's just tons of bait fish in here. These fish love it. It'd be a good place to live if I was a bass. I'd get fat and sassy eating all these, all these shad that are in this river. Here's another something that we should look at. The reason why that fish was exactly where he was, if you look right in here, there's a little bit of shade right on the, on the end of that lay down. See, this is all the sun is out this morning. It's sunny from my boat about halfway to the bank. And then there's a, a overhanging tree that's casting a shadow on top of that one lay down. On a sunny day, that's crucial to always try to find little shade pockets on the bank because that's where the fish will lie in wait to ambush a shad that's swimming by. I'm noticing a lot of little brim and bluegill up near the surface. They're just kind of suspended up near the top near these pieces of wood. That's a good sign. Anytime you see the little the, 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 the uh, bluegill and the little shad and bait fish activity, it's a, a good positive sign that the food chain is active. Things are happening. You're going to catch a bass soon, usually, is a good sign of that. Oh, there we right on the end of that log. Just where he should be. Come here, fella. Oh, 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 come back here. Big old spotted bass. These things fight like there's no tomorrow, I tell you. I just love catching them. Looks like it's about a three pounder. Come on, baby. Come here. That's a dandy. Big old Coosa, Coosa River spot. <clears throat> Look at that fish. That's, oh, he's bigger than three. I bet that's close to a four pound spot. Probably three and three quarters. Beautiful fish. Look at him. He's just a dandy. Love catching those. That, that's a big spotted bass. Anywhere in the country that you might go, very seldom that we catch spots like that. There's a few places that, uh, that I've been to but this Coosa River in Alabama is famous for its big spotted bass, and they get them bigger than this. I have uh, no guys that catch them up to six, seven pounds, twice that big, and that's a monster. Came right, that fish is right on the end of that lay down tree. He's kind of suspended, so just suspended off the end of it. That it's, oh, that end of that tree is about three feet deep, over 10 feet of water, and he was suspended under the end of that log. All right, big fellow, you can go back in there. Come back and catch you someday in a tournament. That was fun. <laughs> I love catching them big spots. <clears throat> Same bait, my little uh, half ounce spinner bait, Colorado, Indiana blades. Another good tip for fish and laydowns is um, to try to parallel the trunk of the tree with your bait. And, you know, the, a big mistake a lot of people make when they when they see a good looking lay down coming up ahead on the shoreline is if the lay down is laying perpendicular to the shoreline, you get a little antsy and you want to, you can't, just can't wait to throw in there like I get that way. 
on a good looking piece of cover. So I end up, you end up throwing a cast over the log. You throw it over the lay down, and then you pull it back across the lay down, and that's not the cast that catches the fish. The cast that catches the fish is the cast that, uh, that goes parallel with the log. So it pays to wait and troll up, get your boat in position to make a cast parallel with the log. Clouds blowing in. It's clouding up. It's like it might rain this afternoon. It should be a good day to catch them on a spinner bait. The one thing we don't have right now is any wind, and a lot of times you, wind is really beneficial to a good spinner bait bite. So what the wind breaks up the surface of the water and it reflects the light a little bit, so the fish don't get as good a look at your lure. I always, when I'm spinnerbait fishing, I always prefer a little bit of a slight chop on the water. But it doesn't always have to be windy. You can sure catch them. There's one. Spotted bass, I think. Look at them. He's just staying down. They don't like to come up at all. Those largemouth, a lot of times, will come up and jump. Spot, just dig, 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 dig down to that deep water. Yep, little cute little spotty bass. Nope, come back here, he's not done yet. <clears throat> Long and skinny. Strong. About a Oh, I don't know, probably two and two and three quarters, something like that, maybe three pounds. Beautiful fish. I love catching spots. We'll let you go. Get real big next time. All right. Fish came right off that isolated stump right there. Sometimes when the fish are right up on the bank. I like to see these little stumps right in here. If the water's real shallow, maybe a foot or two deep, uh, an errant cast that makes a bad splash will spook the fish and they won't bite. So a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just take my spinner bait and I'll just throw it right up on the bank. Then I don't have to worry about my splash. And I can just ease it in the water. Oh, it didn't even make, look how quiet that was and how natural the presentation that was. It didn't even make a ripple when it came in the water. Boy, when those fish are shallow and they're right up on the bank, that's a really good presentation with a spinnerbait. There he is. That's a boat. Good night. You see, <laughs> I mean. That's how much line I had out. I had two feet of line out. That fish almost jumped out of the water and grabbed my spinnerbait. Unbelievable. Come here, you little darling. Look at that fish. Wow. No, I'm no kidding, folks. I had that much line out at the end of my cast. What is that? Two feet at the most. And that fish, <laughs> I was pulling the spinnerbait out of the water. The fish came up and actually grabbed the spinnerbait when the spinnerbait was out of the water like a topwater strike. Unbelievable. I went to, I changed to a, a willow leaf blade there. I went to a silver willow leaf just to show them a little something different. Yeah, that's a dandy. That's about a three pound largemouth. Not as big as some that are in this river, but it's sure a short little stocky thing. Fat. Beautiful little fish. Beautiful coloration and everything. We'll let him go. You're a little fireball fella. You can go back and get big. You might not get big. You keep getting that aggressive. Somebody will catch you and throw you in a frying pan. Okay. Just before I caught that last one, I had a couple of fish bump that, that Indiana bladed spinnerbait. I thought, well, maybe they want more of a finessey presentation. 
and we don't have any wind this morning. It's real calm and slick. And so I thought I'd scale down and go to a little bit more of a uh, subtle, more finesse look. And so I scaled down and went to a little four and a half willow. Um, and I changed also, instead of that double tail, I went to a little grub tail. And uh, sometimes it pays like that to just kind of um, make subtle little changes. I'm still sticking with a spinner bait. I'm not picking up a worm or a jig or anything, but um, sometimes I like to have two or three different rods rigged um, to show the fish different sizes of spinner bait. Woo! That's what. That's why I like fishing these big laydowns. You can catch these big old monster large now. The Bassmasters is brought to you by Pennzoil, Kumo, Berkeley, Plano, and BASF. She is Ooh, over the top of that log back there. Big old large mouth. Come here, baby. Oh. Oh, she's staying down deep. like an amateur on that one, but I got her. Woo! Now that's a largemouth. Look at the size of that mama there. Good old, look how fat she is. That's a Coosa River fish if I've ever seen one. She just came right out from underneath that log and ate that spinner bait. Just chewed it up. Sweetie, thank you. Oh, what a beauty. That thing will probably go, I don't know, I'd say about close to six pounds belly on her just a beautiful fish in great great shape she's been eating well she she uh i'd say about six pounds that's what i'd give her she was right in there along the side of that lawn lay down that comes out and intersects with this huge oak tree she's sitting right in there pretty shallow i'd say she's up in about oh maybe two three foot of water I'd reeled that spinner bait. I made it a nice little cast alongside that log. I reeled it about maybe two feet. She came out and grabbed it. Just killed the spinner bait, crushed it. Whew! That's what. That's why I like fishing these big laydowns. You get to catch these big old monster largemouth. <clears throat> Still gets my adrenaline flowing. I tell you what, it's a lot of fun. I guess when you when you quit getting excited about catching fish like that, it's time to take up golf or something. That's a lot of fun. I'm gonna let that fish go. Oh, thank you, sweetie. You're a lot of fun. You come back and see me again sometime. Okay. Uh, ooh, that was neat. I tell you, I love catching those big bass. I've had a good time today catching these spinnerbait fish on this Coosa River in Alabama. Hope you guys have learned a thing or two uh, that'll help you put another fish or two in the boat next time you go spinnerbait fishing. Make sure you come back again next week, too, and, and watch this same show where when another pro will be on here, sharing his tips and techniques on how he catches big, largemouth bass. We'd like to thank Jay for taking time to share some of his tips with us. And speaking of tips, Shaw, it's time to go to this week's answer line, an opportunity for our viewers to talk to the pros. This week's question is from Mike Dunkerley from Mercer, Pennsylvania. And his question is, most people think that crankbaits are basically for deep water. Now, though, super shallow cranking in just a foot or two of water seems to be gaining popularity among the bass pros. What's the real scoop on this technique? And we're going to give that question to George Cochran, one of the all-time great shallow crankbaiters. Well, Mike, that's a real good question. You know, I almost won the Classic a year ago. I won a tournament on Bugs Island. And some of the techniques that I'm using, I'm using like a little series, small, shallow running crankbait, and I'm using some with bigger lips, and I'm fishing water, real shallow cover. I'm talking about a foot, two foot of water. Normally, most people would be throwing spinnerbaits, and I've been using these little crankbaits and bigger crankbaits with bigger bill, throwing past the cover, reeling the bait up real slow, 
crawling it through. Now, I hang up some, but I've been catching a lot more fish in the last couple of years with this technique because they haven't seen these crankbaits in real shallow water. And so I'm keying in on throwing past the cover, crawling that crankbait as it wobbles and bumping off the cover. And it's really paid off for me the last couple of years, and it showed on some of the tournaments that I won and done real good in. If you've got a question you'd like to ask the pros, just jot it down on a piece of paper and send it to Bassmaster's Answer Line, Bass Incorporated, P.O. Box 17055, Montgomery, Alabama 36141. And be sure to include your name, address, and phone number. All letters, whether we use your question or not, will go into a drawing for an all-expenses-paid trip to the 2001 Bassmaster Classic, courtesy of Bass. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Bassmasters. We'll see you next week.